Booyah, we crushed it. Now let's celebrate by crushing this foam cup. And some packing peanuts while we're at it. Hello. You guys may not know this, but this is actually not styrofoam. And the title of this episode is technically incorrect. This material we've been using for food containers and for packaging is actually called EPS or expanded polystyrene. And it's been mistakenly called styrofoam by pretty much everybody since a very long time. <laughs> Styrofoam is actually a brand of XPS or extruded polystyrene and it was invented accidentally by an engineer at DuPont back in 1941. It's most commonly used as insulation panels for construction. Think of XPS as an extruded solid brick of foam versus EPS which is a bunch of tiny bricks molded together into various shapes with expanding beads using pressure and heat. The result is that with XPS, you get a denser, more homogeneous and uniform closed cell structure, which gives it a higher compressive strength with less permeability to air and water when compared to EPS. If we zoom into the EPS foam, we can see that the structure is actually 98% air, which is why it's so lightweight and buoyant. Unfortunately, while setting up for this test, the pump broke down. It's German made and I had to wait for some seals to come in, as well as some special pump lubricant. And that took a little while. So yeah, that's why I drive a Honda. I know some of you are curious about how the pressure is supplied to the chamber. Well, this is literally the heart of the operation. This industrial water pump is driven by air pressure, which cycles a spool valve and drives a reciprocating piston to generate a flow of pressurized water with the help of two check valves. Let's hook this back up. I also took this opportunity to fix a stubborn leak on the sight glass by take welding a seal around it to fuse it permanently onto the titanium hatch. While this is not standard practice, none of the thread sealants out there worked, so I borrowed an old trick used out on the oil rigs. All right, now if the repair and modification is out of the way, we can carry on.
Wow, that was some major shrinkage, especially with the nuts. This experiment with the foam cups is sometimes conducted by school children at science workshops by piggybacking off deep sea research missions using ROVs and drop rigs to demonstrate the tremendous pressures of the deep ocean. But why does the foam cup shrink? We know that this EPS foam cup is made up of a closed cell structure containing mostly air. We also know that the volume of a gas has an inverse relationship with pressure, which we learned about from Boyle's Law on episode 3. So as the pressure increases, the gas volume decreases, which causes the cells to compress. Some of the cells would tear open, which is probably the reason why it didn't shrink even more and expand back to its original size. It appears the compression of the foam structure forced the polymer chains together, which actually increased the tear resistance of the material. It also has a new letter-like texture and stretch to it. Now let's compare it to the original. Hmm, crunchy. If we fill both cups with hot water, we can see that the compressed wall of the cup has lost some of its thermal insulation, since most of the air is now gone. I don't know about you guys, but I'm curious to see how XPS foam holds up against EPS foam in the chamber. So I went on to search for the real stuff. This is the officially branded Styrofoam made by DuPont. It has a rated compressive strength of 30 psi. Unfortunately, this was the smallest piece I can find, and it's an 8x2 foot panel, so yeah, I need to chop it down. The EPS foam seems to have re-expanded back to its original rectangular shape, 
whereas the XPS foam looks like it was pulled inwards. This is because the slab of the foam was extruded, and the outside of the slab cooled and solidified first before the inside. As the material cools, it shrinks, and it leaves behind some residual stress within the board itself. After the compression and expansion in the chamber, the residual stress was relieved, and this was the end result. At the time of recording, we've since blew past the 5,000 sub mark, and we're currently sitting at 6,500 subs, thanks to you guys. I'm just going to celebrate with my new shot cup. Bottoms up. Add some strong wheatgrass. Just to put things into perspective, 5,000 subs is actually a huge number. Take a look at this. Unfortunately, we lost the fuel along the way. Let me know what we should crush when we double the fleet. Until then, let's... Open. Ready now.